Facebook's lookalike audiences are still one of the best performing targeting types in my accounts and for a really long time has been one of my favorite targeting options that we have across the self-serve paid media landscape. They are pretty simple in concept, but there are a lot of different best practices we have to make sure that we get the most out of them. So in this video, I wanna walk you through a handful of best practices that we've seen work best for lookalike audiences on Facebook. The first bit of advice we have for you is to use a dynamic source for your lookalike audiences wherever possible. That's because lookalike audiences on Facebook refresh every day and having a dynamic source of data will help make sure that whatever changes in your source audience, whether it's behaviors, demographics, any of that, will be reflected in your lookalike audience. Here are all of the sources that you can use to create a custom audience in Facebook ads, and each one of these can be used to build a lookalike audience. By default, all of the meta sources are going to be dynamic based on how people are engaging with your Instagram account, your events, your lead forms, so on and so forth. But some of the sources that you provide may or may not be dynamic. Specifically, offline activity and customer lists require you to import information into Facebook to create the audience. If you upload a customer list or offline activity one time and never update that, that means that your source audience, this custom audience, never has the chance to evolve and change the user profile based on the updates to that customer list or offline activity. Each of these can be fixed by using a dynamic source, whether it's your CRM or just making sure that you're constantly updating the lists manually. But every one of these custom audiences can be used as a source for Facebook lookalikes. We actually just released a video going through each and every one of these custom audiences on Facebook. So if you're interested, you can check out the video at the top of the screen right now. The second suggestion we have for you is to make sure that you use specific audience groups for those custom audience sources. One that always comes to mind and I think is probably the best example here is using customer lists on Facebook. Many times people fall into the trap of thinking a customer list means all of your customers without any segmentation. Depending on how you're trying to use that custom audience, that might be the right usage. But if you have a really big list of customers or you have drastically different customer values within that group, it's in your best interest to create multiple different custom audiences that you can then use as the source for multiple different lookalikes to test which model performs best. Here are some examples of ways that we suggest our clients segment their customer list into multiple custom audiences so we can test different models for lookalikes. The first is all customers. If you only have a small number of customers, maybe looking in the three to 500 range and no more than maybe a couple thousand, all customers might be the right way to go. But if you have any more than that or a drastically different subset, you might start to break those down by returning customers, anybody who's purchased multiple times or customers who have a particularly high ROAS. Maybe anybody over 400% is an outlier. And if you have a large enough number of those users, you can create a separate custom audience around just those high ROAS customers and let Facebook go find people for a lookalike audience based only on those users and not all customers. We work with a lot of B2B SaaS companies. So people who pay for an annual contract versus monthly can be a really valuable audience to those businesses because they get the contract paid up front and they know they're gonna have the client for the whole year. Much less churn with people who have those annual contracts, so finding more of those users can be great. The same thing is true with any of your client base that is a referrer or an affiliate, however you have those set up. If you have clients that are so proud of the work that you do for them, that they're telling other people and other clients are coming to you because of them, you might wanna go find more people who are like your referrers or affiliates and Facebook lookalike audiences can help you do that. The third best practice that we suggest is to feed into whatever learning patterns the Facebook platform has by using sources that match your eventual campaign goals. We're looking back at this list of custom audience sources again. If we're trying to drive for bottom of the funnel actions like purchases or customers, a customer list or a website activity, or even some of the different catalog or shopping pieces might be the right way to go because these are more bottom of funnel. But if you're trying to run a campaign that is focused more on generating mid funnel or top of funnel calls to action, 
You might want to step away from these actions and not focus specifically on those bottom funnel people, but rather focus on the other actions that people have taken. If you're trying to drive more lead generation form submissions for a newsletter or for a content download, maybe you make something based on lead forms. If you're trying to run branding and awareness and you want to have people watch your video and those are going to be your main KPIs, you might want to create a custom audience based on video engagement because those users have taken the action that you want and that can feed into the Facebook lookalike audience to get more of those video views. The nice part is, based on all of the different custom audience sources and all of the different campaign objectives, which if you're interested in those, we have a video about that you can watch right here. There's probably some combination of custom audience source and campaign objective that really leans into whatever your campaign goal is going to be. So you can create a lookalike audience that can help optimize for those goals. The fourth best practice we have for you is to test different percentages. All lookalike models allow you to set a percentage between one to 10 based on the country's population that you're going to target that determines how large the lookalike audience ends up being. I created an example lookalike audience. We have our starting source audience, and then we've chosen United States as our country that we're going to be targeting. And here's where we get to select the lookalike audience size. Down here at the bottom, you can see that we have about an estimate of 2.7 million people because that is going to be 1% of the US population on Facebook. Historically, the 1% models have always performed best for me, but over time, we're seeing that number start to get larger and larger based on Facebook's machine learning and all the different algorithmic changes that they've made. In recent years, I've seen audiences that are about the 3% or even up to 5% perform best for me. But talking to some other people in the industry who have different goals, different clients, different objectives, they've seen things all the way up to 8% perform best. So I really encourage you to test this out and see what actually performs well in your account. You can also create multiple different lookalike audiences all at the same time. Let's say you want to create three and here you can see it retained my 8%, but then gave me another one from eight to 9% and another one from nine to 10%. If you want to be a little more conservative, you could start off with maybe a 1% and a 3% and then a 5%. And now we'll be creating three lookalike audiences, a 1%, so that's zero to one, a one to 3%. So that's going to be the incremental 5.5 million people in the middle. And then another three to 5%, which again is going to be incremental 5.5 million people. These lookalike audiences will all be mutually exclusive. So you will have no overlap in the audience members between them. You'll only be expanding the audience as you go up. And as I mentioned, based on my experience, as well as other people I've talked to, there's no perfect number here, but I do encourage you to test multiple different options. If you've been stuck testing only 1% and you don't see it working, you might need to start expanding that just because the more automated, expanded targeting does seem to be working better on Facebook in recent years. The last lookalike best practice we have for you leans a bit into the testing different percentages, and that leans into campaign structure. Ideally, you can segment to understand what percentage model performs best, but don't be afraid to combine them. This best practice is basically telling you that either campaign structure, as long as it works, is right and is acceptable. For example, here's a prospecting campaign that we've used that has lookalike audiences in an account that we've been managing for maybe three years now. Originally, we had everything set up with a 1% all at different ad set levels and everything performed really well. But over time, we started to notice that performance waned a little bit. Within each of these ad sets, even though we do have the 1% name, we started to expand the percentage model, but kept the source audience the same. And again, saw good performance for a little bit, but over time it went away. We then combined all of them into what we have been calling a super lookalike, where all of these audiences are combined into one, all lookalikes are in the same ad set, and everything's been performing really well for the past year and a half or so in this combined model. I wouldn't be surprised if over time we start to see that this also isn't performing as well. Maybe we need to start leaning more into the Advantage Plus audience targeting, which if you don't know what that is, you can check out the video at the top of the screen right now. But the biggest takeaway for this last best practice for lookalike audiences is to be open to testing different campaign structures and know that you might need to lose some of the insights that we used to have where all audiences were broken down and you could see what performed best simply because a more combined audience is going to do better moving forward.
I'm still a big fan of lookalike audiences. And although I've heard from some folks that they're not as impactful as they used to be, they still perform really well in all of the accounts that we've been managing. As long as you make sure to pay attention to where your sources are coming from, if they're dynamic, what they're helping you optimize toward, and you're being flexible with your campaign structures to make sure you're getting the most out of those lookalike audiences. If you have any additional questions about lookalike audiences on Facebook or any other targeting tactics, feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.